Okay, hello everyone and welcome to IPC 144 for, sorry, 144 100 for 244 200 review. Uh, this review is to make sure that you recall your IPC 144 material so you can easily go through OP244. And we just were, was talk, we were talking about with, uh, um, with Maj, and Maj was uh, saying it's a good idea to, to do collaboration on, on uh, on Discord, and he was schooling me on that. So I'm all yours. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, so Discord is a uh, the most used, I would say, communication platform um, for gamers, actually, for people who play, you know, online games to communicate while playing and all. And um, aside from that, it is recently, it is often used actually for uh, to create platform for courses, um, to share, I don't know, documents, uh, to, I don't know, just uh, you know, hang out. It's like a student community the server that we created and obviously there there are a set of rules um the first name must always be used as your name um cheating is prohibited and um if you do cheat you will be banned and um, i was actually thinking of creating a uh, c program um where i would ask um whoever joins to offer you know their Constant student here. id yeah, their oh, okay. student. Uh, no, they're actually their student ID and save it on a uh, notepad so that if we ban them and they try to join again and give the same student ID, it oh. would show that it already exists. But the thing is, so, that I think you can't do that. I think there are some privacy laws on that. I had to actually blur some oh, video can? of because, yeah, student ID is um, like you're asking for somebody's social insurance number, but in Seneca. <laughs> oh, so I oh, think okay. always there's a fine print. I have no idea, but it kind of rings a bell for me so uh, it's a good idea to take a look at it you can ask for their email that's like email id you can that's oh that works thing. too yeah yeah the uh, college that. email yeah, yeah yeah or you can ask them to if, i don't know i don't know how discord works but uh, thank you very much so uh, what is the link and how do we join like for the person like me who doesn't know what is discord how do we do it all right well, um, I'm going to post a link in the chat and you just need to create a Discord account. And um, once you create an account, either log in you know, um, on web or download the application, you just click on, uh, click on the link and it will automatically prompt you to join the server. Fantastic. Okay, thank you very much. We all see the link over there. Um, I'm going to actually copy the link myself, the, the, actually the whole text over here, copy. And I'm going to hold it in some kind of a text pad thingy somewhere so I can go back to and see how it is done there we go so i saved it for myself you save it for you for yourself people and that's i think it's a, a brilliant idea and i'll try to join i think last time i tried to join it sometime it identified that i'm a teacher and didn't let me <laughs> i'm joking but oh, <laughs> no <okay>. i'm joking <laughs> I'll, 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 otherwise I, I'll join it. So you are the moderator for it, which means you are accepting um, people or it's automatic? Um, yes, I uh, know. Um, it's automatic. A anybody can be accepted, of course. Okay. And there are, there are, um, multiple other moderators who were in, in my section in the last okay. semester as well. So please don't ban me when I'm coming in. That's all. Oh, no, of course. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome to join. <laughs> all right. So that's it. Uh, so, um, any other thing anybody wants to say before we begin? Yeah. Maybe I, I do want to say something. Go um, ahead, Louis, please. Well, so uh, I kind of learned uh, how to, like, uh, send my assignments through this uh, matrix. Submit a program. And, uh, yeah. It, so let me just uh, show it to you. In, I'm going to I'm gonna go through it in a nutshell quickly at, at the, as the beginning of the thing and tell you exactly how it works. I'm going to do a program and send it send it to Fardad as do, do a... Um, a submission and send it to uh, myself uh, from my student account as a demonstration. You want me to do that? Uh, yes, please. All because right. Thanks, um, the, the, this semester, it's kind of the first time I ever do this. And uh, didn't you take IPC one four four? Yes, but uh, submission was in a different way. Hmm, interesting. I don't know that. No, anyway, anyway. So okay. So sure, I'll do it. So um, let me explain first what Submitter is. Submitter is essentially a program I have written a long time ago in the galaxy far, far away. And let me just actually uh, uh, share my screen over here so we can actually talk like that. So I'm going to turn off this video from here to give you more real estate. And then turn on my screen sharing. 
I can see from this one now you can see my screen what I'm going to do now is to actually use the screen recorder that I have over here and project my there you go my video over here and I can see there's a street light over there let me just go turn that thing off all right coming back and there we go okay so um, uh, submitter so uh, essentially what happens with the submitter is is this uh, let me just um, uh, see if I'm connected to global so the first thing that you need to do you have to connect to uh, uh, the the global protect uh, VPN to get connected to to Seneca because uh, matrix is considered to be an internal server of Seneca and it's a Linux cluster which means there are like 50 computers sitting side by side they are all they're carrying Linux operating system then they act like one uh, and please stop me as if you have any questions just turn on your microphone and talk and those people who logged in as listen only I rather to see you be able to talk anyways so yeah so as I was saying um, uh, what what as a professor what we need to do when you're submitting an assignment when you're submitting an assignment as a professor I need to be able to make sure that your code is correct it runs properly and the output that you generated is proper and then after that so, um, I have to look at the <clears throat> style of code <clears throat> the logic you have used to be able to give you a proper feedback and a quick feedback but the essentials of a program is to run and execute the program that doesn't run and doesn't execute and doesn't produce any output is worthless in computer science you need to have minimum requirements of a running program that actually executes and generates a, a minimum amount of accuracy with an output and that is worth looking at other than that that is not <clears throat> that is not <clears throat> that is not worth anything how many times you have gone outside and bought a game that they say this that doesn't work but the program I've written is amazing it, it doesn't work though it doesn't compile you cannot see anything on a screen but the code is amazing I don't think anybody I've ever seen something like that and that's what it is so big to make uh, the feedback process quicker for students what I did uh, was this because um, like I, I'm teaching two sections each one around 35 students so there are 70 students over there two submittables per week that's six that's or 70 so I need to get the solution for 70 students twice a, uh, twice a week compile run it see if the output is correct or not and then go through and that becomes physically impossible so like you can't you don't have enough time to do that it's just we don't our day hours are not long enough so what I did I wrote a program that this program actually does that for us which means uh, the basic thing of putting the files together compiling and so on and so forth it will do it for us so we essentially set up the submitter program I have written to uh, know exactly what the workshop files are and uh, compiles it it runs it um, so you do the running with it uh, it runs it for you and you go through ex the execution it captures the output compares the output to certain limit to, to make sure it's okay you can say skip spaces so it means it's not going to be precise with spacing or lining you can you can t ask it to ignore those things uh, but you're going to lose mark obviously so if your output is correct but the spacing is not right then you're going to lose some mark but you can still submit it and then after this minimum thing is done it asks you if you want to submit or not and you will say yes and automatically an email is sent to your um, prof so that's what happens with submitter how do but how does it work um, uh, actually I do have some stuff over here that I can actually use let me see what is this these are all closed sessions I believe Let me just close them over here and this is another one so I am going to um, start my uh, student um, account so I'm gonna start my student account um, 
So I will log into my student account and <coughs> then let's say I want to do my OP244 work over here. So I'm going to make a directory. I'm going to call it uh, OP works in here. <coughs> now, if you follow my uh, playlist on uh, using GitHub, so you can do all these things with repositories and GitHub, so you don't have to do things back and forth. But hey, so I'm going to make uh, a directory called OP works and I'm going to go see OP works. <coughs> And in here, I'm going to create a directory. I'm just being organized over here. So I'm going to type over here, make directory W1. That is workshop one, CDW1. And then I'm going to run my uh, FTP client. Now the FTP client, oh, upgrade, seriously, I, do I have to? No, I don't, good. So I'm going to log into my account. <coughs> So now I'm connected to my account. So I'm going to uh, go up to the account and find the OOP works over here and W1. <clears throat> now at left side, I'm going to go at a place that on my computer, I developed the thing the way they asked me to. So I'm going to go right in there. Seneca, where is my Seneca account? Let me just find it off screen. Um, there you go. So let's say I want to submit the lab one, um, uh, or I'm going to actually submit the do-it-yourself one, because uh, that has some uh, data entry that could be better. So, so this is my uh, files that I have over there. So I'm going to select all the things that I need to send uh, uh, to compile my program with. I'm going to select all those, not everything, only those files. I have to make sure that it's set to text. If you don't do that, you'll be in trouble because Linux environment treats text files other, uh, differently as uh, Windows environment. So when you are passing it through, you have to make sure that you're going to set those things to be text. And I'm going to move them all over here. So everything is in here right now. And now I want to submit it to my professor. So I'll come over here in the uh, directory that I have that I can see all the files are there. I'm going to say over here, tilde, and by name of my professor is farda.solimandu, slash submit. And then over here, I put the name of the workshop. So if you are a 200 student, you go 200 W1 part 2. If you are a 244 student, you go 244 part 2. If you don't know what uh, options you can use on Submitter, you simply wipe this out and just hit it like that and it tells you all the things. So if you say dash do, Submitter is going to tell you what is the due date for this particular thing. So if I, if I actually put this over here and say dash do, it's going to tell me it is open after Friday. This on submission before, uh, on time submission is before 23rd and late submission is after 23rd, which you're going to get 0% mark and submissions are rejected at 20 after 24th. So it tells you when the due date is. If my program, I know it's the, 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 the spaces are not right. I can always, I can always add skip spaces after the command. So when I actually submit, I can actually, uh, do it like this. I can actually put over here, type skip spaces, <clears throat> which means don't match the spaces. Only the values that are printed should be compared or skip blank lines. So if you have extra blank lines, it's going to ignore that one too. And um, if, if the, <clears throat> the project, if the uh, workshop is uh, released, but it is not open for submission yet, you can always use dash feedback that runs the submitter exactly as if you want to submit, but it doesn't submit to the professor. So even if it's after rejection date, you can use dash feedback to make sure your, your workshop is done properly. So this, these are the options of the submitter. Are we, do we understand what the options of the submitter uh, are? Uh, sorry, sir, I just had a question. Uh, yes. Do we compile in Matrix first before we send it off to you? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm assuming that all the compilations yeah. and stuff are done already. Okay, okay. Yeah, but Submitter will compile for you too. So Submitter okay, is, does you. the compilation for you. You can go dash feedback if you're lazy to type that thing, that uh, command line, but it's a good idea to do that. 
um, <clears throat> uh, pinpoints what the error is. <clears throat> so essentially, it's uh, it's better to individually compile single files, not all of them. We told you in a, in workshop one how to do that. And uh, so the compilation of the individual files passes through. Then you compile the whole thing, and then you press. Uh, the enter key over here it's going to say submitting workshop on part to do it yourself i hit enter and it says your reflect.txt is missing i'm supposed to add a reflect.txt so now i know oops i forgot reflect.txt <clears throat> i have to do that so i'm going to say over here pico reflect.txt reflect.txt and in here i'm going to say i am reflecting like crazy so but you don't do that you actually reflect you know what i mean right so control x and i'm going to save and get out and try the submission again one more time and now it passes through it's going to say it's compiling and the command line that is actually using for compilation is this so you can actually see what the compilation command is this is what it's doing c plus plus slash wall c plus plus 11 out output is ws for workshop then these are the files that are compiling and the output is going to go to errors.txt and it's going to say i'm about to execute the tester and capture the output in out yada 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 so we hit that one and it runs and compiles it usually in a tester program i add this thing to ease your life so you can you don't have to type over and over so what do you do to come to actually enter this if you don't want to enter it by hand and make a mistake over and over just double click on each part that you want to uh, submit so double click highlights it and right click on your mice mouse dude see i'm going to right click on a mouse and see what happens i right click and it types it over there so you don't have to keep typing it and i hit enter so that's the first one now the second one i right click and i hit enter third one right click enter that one right click enter now this one I'm gonna on purpose type something wrong so in here I'm gonna say Jake and I'm gonna hit enter instead of Jack okay and I'm gonna put um, uh, the exclamation one to end and I enter and as you see now it says checking output line number 333 of your output the output is supposed to be GA so JA's are match and it tells you that the C and K over here are not a match okay and it says unmatched character date details you have the C character with the ASCII tool of yada 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 but you were supposed you were supposed to have this one but now you printed this one the output don't match Submission aborted. And I'm going to say, ah, I made a mistake, or my program doesn't run, or the program is not generating anything properly. All the details are kept over here in student.txt and correct output.txt. So you can actually look at the two files and see what the correct output is supposed to be and what output you generated. Compare the two, make sure that you didn't make any mistakes. What were the mistakes so you can find it? You fix the mistake and you run the. Uh, and you run the submission again and run that one run this one run this one this one this one and finally exclamation mark and hit enter uh, it's gonna say success outputs match on time students on time submission which means what you're doing is on time would you like to submit the demonstration of workshop part two if you say yes this yes actually emails it to me so if i click yes over here it the email is going to be sent it says thank you your work is now submitted confirmation of submission was sent to your my seneca email so check your my seneca email if you have received the, your assignment submission in in email it means your prof had done it too please do not submit it five times just in case therefore the submission like this goes through and uh, uh, what your prof is going to receive would be something like this there we go i just received that one workshop one yada yada was submitted by f solima and i can and the pro your prof can simply click um, i have a uh, preview where but anyways um, enable I don't know why it's not previewing it's supposed to but uh it's it does actually there you go so 
So I can actually see what the outputs are and what the programs are, and I can actually see what, what student output is. I can see what your reflection is, which in this case, I'm going to see it says I'm reflecting like crazy. I'm going to resubmit your assignments, your, your workshop. That's not acceptable. You lose 40% of the mark because you did not reflect. And I, anyway, so I can go through everything. And if you do something over here that I don't find correct, so what I can do over here, I can simply reply. And in here I can say, mm, you did not reflect properly. And I hit send and the student is, gonna, is going to receive the reply from me where, uh, from which uh, he would understand what he or she did wrong with the submitter. And that's all about it. Okay, uh, are we okay with submitter? Do we understand how it works? Uh, yeah, Professor, yeah, um, yes. I have a question if that's okay. Go ahead. Um, um, in the first semester, um, well, first of all, I'm not sure if you're creating our BTP 200 workshops. Uh, are you? I am supervising or... it, and okay, if they're so... not proper, then I'm creating it, yes. Okay, Okay. thank you. Um, so I just want to say, in the first semester, um, the hardest part wasn't actually coding, but it was submitting, especially when we have very, very long outputs. That's what I'm saying. Um, like you, when you see right now, I'm actually giving you so you can right-click and paste. Oh, no, I know, I know that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just, um, yeah, I just want to say in the first semester, I asked, um, we had Professor Peter Liu, I asked mm -hmm. him if we can have maybe an auto submitter of some sorts. And at the time, I'm not sure, but I think he contacted our course co uh, coordinator, which was, um, I, I that think has it's to be Professor me because Cameron. I am the person who oh, you did, are? The, did the sub submitter, oh, is you. but uh, yeah, sure. Oh. Oh, okay. And I, yeah, I, I just was wondering if we're going to have a Python um, auto submitter as well for uh, BTP 200 to save some time with inputting. Uh, you're talking about that Python script that yeah. uh, automates the thing. This is C++, it's not Python. And you can go take a look at the source code. If you can rewrite it in Python, by all means, I'll use it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the source code is on GitHub. You can go on GitHub oh. and see it's open source. You can actually see what the source code is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. And if you can yeah, rewrite you. what I wrote 10 years ago with C++ and Python, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so keep yeah. that, it's not an easy thing. I tried yeah. to do uh, one of the things, like I just to explain to you why it cannot be done. This is how it's, because Python, uh, with Python, because Python is an interpreter, not a compiler. Okay. You're, you're opening a can of words, my friend. Okay. Um, Okay. Python is an interpreter, not a, a compiler. And because it's an interpreter, essentially every single command line that you are doing is a separate executable running. Do you understand that? So yeah. every single line of your Python is running is like an individual executable is running. Between two lines, you can go to operating system and ask it to do something for you. With C++, the whole program is an executable. When you get into executable, the operating system is gone. I cannot ask the operating system to do anything because it's not present at the time. Okay. You, you follow so, that? Now, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if I actually run the program over here, I could have done this. Like, I could have asked you to select the whole thing and right-click. And as you see, it actually works. It actually works through everything, but everything gets buffered in a first entry and are fed afterwards. I could have ask submitter to check for this for correct. So what I can do, I can have two versions, auto submitter, which is gonna have a garbage output, but if you pass, you're okay. But, and uh, the one that is actually in detail, so I can actually capture this as the correct output. You follow what yeah. I'm saying? In, I do, but it was it was just to automate the inputs. Exactly, but just oh. automating the input, it means you have to okay. tag into operating system and ask okay. operating system to simulate a keystroke. When operating oh, yeah, system is, is nowhere to be yeah. fine, found, you cannot, as you see, everything happens in one shot, Okay. not in yeah. steps. When in Python you do that, at Every single new line, it pauses and executes the next Python program. Anyways, this is not IPC 144 review. Let's not do it. Okay, my apologies on okay. that. So, Armando, yeah, probably you, you can start putting the timing from now on. From now, so at at start of 25 minutes, we started IPC 144. Okay. So, uh, professor. Yes. Um, actually, just to go on the input auto automated input, like mm -hmm. just for that topic, I know last semester. 
uh some people had like um a lot of like uh they had a lot of um I'm sorry I'm like lost for words they they had a lot of luck with like the auto hot script um for mm -hmm. the windows machines yes for automating their input oh. and i think that's like a fairly easy process yeah you... yeah but that's from you from the student point of view so you can put that one in yeah. discord yeah yeah yeah, yeah. put that so one in like discord for... and tell to students how you can actually yes you can do that you can actually tell to yeah. the to 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 that program to simulate uh keyboard the entry. keystrokes oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah just for students i was, I was yeah just so, so students it, yeah, students have know. to learn how to use that application it can be done yes but again yes um double clicking and right clicking is not a big deal you can, like this yeah. one you, you can actually and we'll, we will try to uh, i'm gonna I, uh, lots of profs wrote the um wrote the uh, workshops last semester so i'm supervising and to check to see if it works or not i'll try to minimize the input entry the data entry but i'm not quite sure if it's possible to do be to be able to do it 100 percent. i'll do my best though all right okay let's begin everyone so any questions again before we begin hello professor hello. yeah uh i um if i found the if i found some mistake on submission can i can i submit a new one um this is how it happens like if it's before due date yes oh so you oh. can do th you can submit three times four times even if there is a reason for it like you submit for the first time then i say oh my god i could have written my program better and the due date is not over yet submit again it doesn't matter but i'm saying is, and then what you're doing that you have to write it in a comment that i am resubmitting because i fixed this i am resubmitting because i fixed that okay oh, okay okay but yes you. of course you can that's the whole purpose of programming when you find some mistake you fix it of course you do there's no problem with that. Yeah, thank you. Thank no you very problem. much. All right. So um, let's continue. Um, um, that was a quick thing about submitters. So we could actually set that one as a submitter thingy. Anyway, so I'll start uh, by creating a Visual Studio uh, project. Uh, so I'm going to say empty project next. And the repository that's going to be in, it's going to be the OOP244 NAA and NBB notes. So you can see the notes over there. And I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it um, 144100 review. So that's where uh, uh, the notes are going to go into. And I'm going to click select folder. So everything's going to be there. And uh, project name, I'm going to put over here session okay or uh, code so the code is going to be in here i'm going to create it and <coughs> it is created there we go so we are writing c programs over here so extensions got to sum up uh, the extension is going to be dot c to actually simulate the c program and uh, I apologize in advance if I make any boo-boos. Please let me know if there's anything wrong with what I create. So I'll, I'll fix it immediately. Um, uh, so uh, let it begin. So we will start with... <coughs> let me open up my text pad. And have my kind of scrap board and left over here. All right. <clears throat> New item. So I'm going to call it prg.c. Okay. So that's a C program writing. I'm writing. So I am including uh, include uh, include uh, cstdio.h and int main and in here i'm going to say return zero and i'm going to say printf hello um, uh, review students students go to new line and end it up okay 
So uh, just to make sure everything's set up properly, I'll run it and see if everything's good. Yes, we have uh, Hello Review Student printed, so our, I'm ready to go. What I will do is to open actually a browser and I'm going to go to the IPC144 uh, uh, notes and I start right from the beginning. So uh, computer, hardware, software, online, and the, 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 the review is actually uh, based on your uh, 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 feedback too. So I'll go through the topics and I'm going to ask you if you want any, uh, if you have any questions about that piece in part as we are going through it and then uh, uh, if you have any questions, you'll stop me. So uh, through the hardware uh, of the computer, any pr uh, hardware, uh, memory, um, uh, devices, software, uh, uh, any problems with any of these topics? All right, and be quick with responding to the thing so I can go through it quickly, okay? And... Uh, uh, the structure of memory, we have uh, a memory is um, uh, a piece of uh, uh, a series of uh, bytes back to back that uh, mm, uh, the size of it depends on the money in your pocket. The bigger the um, uh, RAM you buy and put it on your computer, the bigger the memory of your computer is. Uh, you have certain limits with it, but every single, uh, every single memory is essentially a chain of bytes back to back and I see lots of people did not respond to my poll which I do not like please do it you didn't do it but next time just cl click on a yes or no if you have uh, if uh, and if you don't know what the answer is ask me for that what was the answer anyways so memory is a chain of uh, bits and uh, a chain of bytes back to back each byte ca uh, can uh, hold one uh, ASCII code in it or one um, uh, integer number between uh, minus 128 and positive 127 or uh, 0 to 255. Each byte is an integer that can hold that big of a number. Th that bit of a number is represented by eight. That's that piece is a piece of number that is from 0 to 255 or minus 128 to positive 127 is represented by 8 bits. So essentially these 8 bits, how they are uh, turned uh, off and on, sets uh, the value as you see over there. Um, they call half of uh, the, uh, a byte a nibble and uh, each one of those bits that are 1 and 0, they are called a bit as you see. Um, now... Um, the, the byte is designed based on the ASCII code originally when they created the original computer. At the time, the programming was in, uh, um, in English, so they said how many uh, letters in an alphabet we have. I think we have 26. Then they say, okay, we need uppercase so to 26 by 26 is 50. And then they said, how about the, uh, the um, what should we call it, special characters and numbers and stuff like that. So they, they got to something around um, 120 something, 120 something, and I said, okay, 120 something. We we need so if if I need if I have seven bits, I can make 128. So that's enough. Then they said, wait, wait, wait. Let's add one more bit just in case. So it, and it becomes symmetrical. So they made it a byte, okay. And that seven bits and eight bits discussion is the difference between binary and text that when you select in FTP. So in FTP you select because of that backward compatibility with that 7 bits and 8 bit characters, a text file on Windows is different with uh, a binary file because it treats the 7 bits with the for the text, not the 8. Um, uh, uh, but Linux operating system, everything's binary, so uh, your byte is a byte, it's 8, by 8 bits, so remember that. Okay, so that's that, uh, and uh, so each ASCII code resides in one byte, and that's where the character of C language comes from. So when you say character A, it's not actually a character, it's an integer that is only one byte long, which means minus 128 to 127, or so on and so forth. So that's the memory uh, of the computer, and the bigger they get, you have many more than these bytes, and that's what it is. And when you say address in memory, you're actually talking about the sequence number of these bytes in memory. So if somebody asks you in an interview, what is the smallest uh, 
uh, um, unit of memory, you will say you will say byte because you can actually find out which byte you're talking about. I want the address 9052. You can go to the 952nd byte in memory, and that's the byte you're talking about. But if they tell you that's the smallest addressable unit of memory, but if smaller the smallest unit of memory that is not addressable, you cannot find out which one is what. It's bit. There is no way for your computer, your program to tell you what is the third bit in a byte. You can't do that. In a, you cannot say, I want the 900th bit in memory. You can't do that. For that, you have to jump through hoops and write some uh, crazy assembly language to be able to do it. Anyways, uh, words essentially are integers, four bytes. Um, hexadecimal is the representation, uh, easy representation of the content of a byte because seven uh, Bit, uh, eight bits of binary uh, translates exactly to two, di two digits of hexadecimal. Memory uh, model, we talked about it. So you have a RAM, it goes from here to there. We know what it is. Addresses, we already talked about it. That's the sequence number of the bytes and we're okay. Are we okay with, the bi with, uh, with memory? If you're not okay, simply stop me and tell me, I, I wanna ask this question, that question, and we'll go through it. All right. So if the answer is no, just turn on the microphone first and talk to me. All right, let's go to the next one. All right. Compilers. What are compilers? Compilers are actually what you... Um, um, uh, so um, you write uh, your programs in human language. You, t you write it in English, actually. Uh, and the English language that you... Because compiler is an extremely dumb thing. Compiler, remember, we don't have an intelligent compiler. Uh, inter intelligent computer, all computers are dumb to the bone, okay? Which means they don't understand what you're saying, they cannot comprehend what you're talking about. That's why we have to limit our English language down to only few verbs and commands for the compiler to understand. And that subdivision of English language creates different programming languages. I subdivide it in C to syntax, it becomes C language. I subdivide it in C++, it becomes C++. I subdivide it to Python, it becomes Python language. So essentially all these programming languages are subdivision of English language put in one uh, small portion so the stupid compiler can understand what we are saying. Actually, compiler can, uh, the, uh, the stupid computer can understand what we are saying, but the even that the computer cannot understand. That is even that dumb thing that I write for i equals zero, i less than two, and i plus plus, just to ask the computer to repeat something, it cannot. I have to actually ask another helper to come in, which is a program written in assembly language originally, and then other programming languages. So that program that is called the compiler comes, grabs my English language, compiles it, and turns it into binary. So essentially, that sub subdivision of the English language, that is C language, I'll give it to C compiler. C compiler receives it, compiles it, and gives it, spits out for me a file that is zeros and ones that is understandable by CPU, but not yet. It is translated to machine code, ready for, ready for CPU, but still CPU cannot understand it. So what happens, another program comes in, called a linker, grabs that zeros and ones and kind of fits it in a way so it can become an executable. That's the difference between the compiler's object file that you create and exe file that you, that you execute. So linker does that. And compiler doesn't run only once when you are actually compiling the program. Compiler runs several times. If you are compiling five files, compiler runs five times, creates five object files, the linker receives those five object CPU files, puts them together and create the executable and therefore you have your program running. Are we okay with how compiler works? And that is why when you write a program and you have five files and you write your functions in different files, initially everything compiles properly, but the linker tells you, hey, you promised there is a function called calculate sum, but I cannot find it anywhere in the files. That's the linker giving you error, not the compiler, okay? So compiler accepts your promises as long as you have a prototype for a function. Linker is the one that actually connects your prototypes to actual functions to make sure they exist. And that was the compiler, in short. Yada, yada, yada. So, 
Yeah, it's basics of C language. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it in a moment. Uh, I don't care about it for now. Yeah, okay. C language is case sensitive, like Linux application, because it was done in Linux, it is actually, um, um, what should we call it? Um, case sensitive. For every, uh, every time you want to do write a program, for your programs that you write, you want to calculate stuff, you want to have some data to write, do stuff with your program you want to get someone's name you want to um, find the sum of two numbers you want to find the sum of two million numbers you want to do stuff like that so essentially you want to do something okay you want to do something to some information do something to some information calculate the age F calculate the sum and store it somewhere so the things you want to actually calculate and find the values and sums and stuff that you want those are types those are types that we call them variables with types we create variables of certain types and those names that you put for variables actually respond to a piece of memory which is going to hold your values someone's age someone's name some some result of some kind of a program program do we understand that Now there are some limited types that we have in the language that tells you, like they tell you you can hold a character, uh, but it's not really a character, it's the ASCII code of a character and they call it character. They call it you can hold integer in different sizes, you can hold uh, uh, real numbers, floating point numbers we call it in programming, and you, you, you put those types and name it like float, int, character and all those stuff. Essentially in C language we have only two types and two types only and we don't have any other type. Remember this? This is important. We have two types in, in C language and nothing but two types. Integers, real numbers. Integers, floating point numbers. These two numbers. We do not have anything else. We don't have a character. We don't have a string. We don't have anything like that. Anything else we want to make in C language, we have to make it out of integers or floating point numbers. Do we understand this? So the question comes up, if it's only integer and double, I, how do I hold? Go ahead, Carmel. Yeah, uh, this, is, this was my question. How do you hold the string? Uh, Thank you. Uh, That's, that was exactly what I wanted to say. So if I can only hold integers, how do I hold someone's name? The answer is that we have integers that are small size of a byte that can hold ASCII code of a character. Let's say 65 as A. 92 as lowercase a so so I can hold the ASCII code inside one character are we okay with Carmel there with that Carmel down I want you do, yes, don't turn I off do. your microphone because I want to get kind of feed of your question and be able to answer it okay so if I can only hold carrot code of one character in a byte if I put 50 of these bytes together I can hold 50 characters correct uh, yes. Yes, but the problem is that I I can never tell if I have fifty characters and it won't, if I want to hold someone's name, then F A R D A D. That's only six, so forty four of them remains empty. Correct? Yes. How do we know where is the end? So we're gonna say we're gonna use an ASCII code that doesn't refer to any character, and that ASCII code is zero. We call it null. So they say put all your characters in that character array and display the end of the information with a null byte. And they call this in C language, this standard uh, string. So string is essentially an array of characters which is zero at the, with the zero uh, and invalid uh, ASCII code at the end. Do we understand it? Yeah, so we use ASCII code to convert string to we don't to use ASCII code to convert string. We use ASCII code to hold character information. So take a look. In here, if, I, if I'm writing typed, okay, T has an ASCII code, Y has an ASCII code, P has an ASCII code, 
e as an ASCII code and D. So if the, the first one goes into first byte, second byte, third byte, fourth byte, fifth byte, and I put a zero at the end, then I have typed in a character array. But this action, this is standard, I call it a string. Are we good? Okay. Okay. Yes. Really. Okay. This actually we call it a C string. Like if you come to OP two four four, you'll see in our project, in our, in our, in all our uh, uh, workshops and referrers that we're doing, we actually call it a C string to to kind of specify this is not an entity. This is a method. This is a, a standard to follow, and. To follow the standard, they actually create a header file called string header file. They wrote functions to only deal with arrays that are not terminated, and they call it string header file. We're going to come to it soon. Anyways, so that's that. Um, uh, Azusa, uh, we're good too? Um, so um, you're saying that um, um, with ASCII code, you're, uh, we are holding, uh, we are... Um, interpreting the character uh, from from a character from a number so that we can actually hold string character strings so let's let's do, let's do it like this take a look at the screen okay you see this okay, okay. so now in here i'm going to say character uh, message as you see i'm here saying character not string and then in here, I'm going to say, I don't know, 100. So I'm going to create an array. And inside this array, I'm going to say hello. And I'm going to put this one over there. Are we OK with this? Are we OK with this, Asusa? Yes. OK. Yes, so, so in far. here, if I say message, printf is going to print the exact same thing. Are we OK with this? Yes. OK. Now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to write a for loop, if you can remember. Sorry, I'm going a little ahead. But we, I'm going to write a for loop, integer i set to 0. We're going to talk about for loops later. OK. Now in here, mm -hmm. I'm going to say for integer i set to 0, i less, and sorry, message i i being not equal to zero, which means keep going until message i becomes zero and i plus plus. And in here, I'm going to say put character message i. So I'm all I'm doing over here, one by one, print the characters until I hit zero. Do we understand this? Uh, excuse yes. me, sir. Yes. Is it not slash zero? Like for what? Slash zero for. Like message i not equal to zero. Karma, I have like a question. A... I have a question. Okay, I have a question. ASCII code of a character being zero and the number zero, what's the difference? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> if I told I you, mean, what, you see what like I'm saying. That. I know, I know, I know. That's what that's what you have to take out of your mind in C language. In C language, we have fifty. We don't have two different types of zeros. Zero is a zero. You can say message not equal to zero, or you can say message not equal to a character code whose ASCII code is zero. Potatoes, potatoes. Who cares? They are both zero. You are okay. saying ASCII code of a character whose code is zero, or you just say zero. Oh, okay. I wasn't know that. Zero is zero. Zero is zero when you call it null. Zero is zero when you call it a address. Zero is zero. Zero is zero means zero. It doesn't make any difference, right? So if I actually run this, you will see that the, that hello thing is now printed twice. Are we okay with that, Azusa? Yes. Now, take yes. a look at this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to write the exact same for loop in here. But instead of that for loop, I'm going to write a printf like this. Printf percent %d and message i. OK? And I'm going to put a little comma in here or a space to separate the numbers. OK? Now, if I run the program, mm -hmm. see what happens? Mm -hmm. These are the ASCII code. This is the ASCII code of H. This is the ASCII code of E. This is the ASCII code of L. This is the ASCII code of L. ASCII code of O. ASCII code of space. ASCII code of R. ASCII code of E. And it keeps going like that. Okay. Are, we, are we okay with this? I'm good. 
All right, so this yeah. is what we actually call a, a character in C language. There is no character. It's just integer numbers, but we are asking the C language to print the shape of 72, which happens to be H. Are we good? Thank you. All Thank you right. Good. All right. So that's that. So, whoa. Uh, um, <laughs> I should have, uh, okay, I should have kept that hello thingy. So just, let me just copy this. Copy and control Z it to the beginning. Oh, control Y to the, okay. I'm going to save this as 01 hello. Let's see. And And, oh, not this one. And I'm going to keep this one as uh, 0, 2. What the heck is a character dot C? Are you okay with that? So we're going to keep going like this. So when you look at the repository of the review session, where is the review session that I had? I have no idea where I left it. Let me open a file scroller. So when I actually go, when you actually go to that repository uh, in uh, 144100 review, the one of your code, and these are the codes that I'm writing so you can refer to it later on. Uh, are we okay with this? All right, so now we know what characters are, and let's get on with it quickly and keep going forward. So character is an integer that is one byte. Integer is an integer that is four byte. Float, float is a floating point number with decimal points after it was partial real number that is four bytes. Double is a real number that is eight bytes, okay? So character is a very small integer, uh, only three digits uh, integer. Integer is getting more and you can see exactly what the size is probably it says somewhere now we have different types of integer too: short two bytes long four bytes long long eight bytes so bigger integers go over there and we have the same thing for uh floating point numbers too and const qualifier if you put const behind the name like so you write so if you write integer integer sorry if you write ca const integer a then it means that a is not uh, changeable. So um, if you want something to, to not change, you can say const, for example, double tax is set to 0 0.13, which means you can never change the value of this task. This const actually makes it constant. So that's another type that we have. Uh, talked about those. Negative values, I'm not going to go through pointer uh, for, through uh, bit representation of that one. It's irrelevant. R uh, read these if you want to. Um, you're going to find this out later on. So these are as big as numbers can get in uh, uh, integers. So this is the biggest integer number that you can put in a long, long. Um, and in a long double, uh, that's the number of maximum uh, uh, 10 to power this you can actually go up. So this is 10 to power 37. Uh, 10 to power 307 so that's as big as it gets but the bigger they are um, the less precise they are remember that so that's why in C language you you should never ever write a code like this because double numbers are big and uh, to, to explain to you what it is like if I told you uh, the distance from here to Sun okay you're going to say it in kilometers. That's long. If you say it to centimeters, then it's going to be holy schmoly. Then, then I'm going to, then I'm going to just few that little cent, like if it's like at, at 20 digit number and then afterwards three centimeters, who kept, who cares about that? You don't want to put that three centimeters when it's too big. It's the same thing over here. Double numbers, they hold such big numbers that they cannot be precise with, for the small parts. Because of that, if I say over here C out for, uh, oh, sorry, this is C, line, C++, not C. Uh, so if I say over here double value, okay, uh, and I say uh, printf enter um, uh, tax, and I do over here scanf percent LF, and I put address of value in here, 
and then I say if value is equal to tax printf they are the same okay actually let's write it properly printf they are the same only here I'm going to say else printf they are not the same okay so if I write something like this I'm gonna run it and just take a chance and see if it's gonna work if it doesn't I'm gonna just explain okay oh, I hope that it's gonna work so if I actually run it like this and I'm gonna build errors really what are the uh, oh I need that secure thingy because it's uh, it's uh, it considers it unsafe um, copy that and define yeah that prevents that uh, warning to come up so anyways if I put over here 0.13 it's saying they are the same but we are very lucky usually it is not the same like when you do something like that one like the value in here actually becomes so when you enter sometimes the value is gonna be 0 0.12 something like this oh sorry uh, yeah, something like this. So it is not exactly 13. And because of that, when you enter, sometimes it goes like this. It still says they are the same. I'm, I'm surprised. Sometimes it doesn't say, as you see, they are not actually the same, but it's actually uh, uh, considering it the same. So it's not precise. Uh, the double values I just showed, one is 0 0.3, and the other one was uh, uh, the value that I just entered, that I lost. And still it told me they are the same so as you see it is not precise you have to be careful about it um, you should never check so never check never check real numbers that is floating point for equality now how do you test it then? You reduce the value by tax and you see what's the difference. If the amount is between specific uh, ratio of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, precision, then you consider it in the same. So you say tax minus value, you hold that value. If that value is smaller than uh, uh, 0 0.000001 or greater than minus 0 0.0001 then you're okay and the two values are the same never check real number floating point numbers for equality are we okay with that um professor i have a question if it's yes. okay um yeah i was wondering what the difference is between writing constant let's say constant integer four or um, doing the number sign define define uh have yeah. you ever have you ever written uh something about especially now about one of your classmates and you kept saying you wrote it and you called Robin this Robin that Robin and she this she that and then at the end you found out that Robin is not actually a she it's a he then you do a search and replace I'm not gonna rewrite the whole thing you say find all the she's and replace it with he find all the hers and replace it with he and your letter becomes correct you've never you've done that right you did search and replace correct Okay, define statement is literally, literally, search and replace before compilation. So whenever you have a number sign, it's not C language, it's compiler language. You are asking compiler to do something before compilation. And define language is that. So essentially, if you have a tax over there, it's going to take all the taxes away and replace it with 013, which may cause problem because sometimes search and replaces don't, seem right they gave you the example for the fine statement to be careful didn't they um i don't, I don't okay i'll so. put it on i'll put it on i'll put it on uh, so in here i'm gonna say uh, not check equal for reals dot c okay so 
I'll, I'll give you a very quick example to see how bad the fine statements are. So I'm going to say uh, define uh, sum to a plus b. Are we okay with this? Yeah. So I'm saying change sum to a plus b. And then what I will do over here, I'm going to say integer um, a is 10, uh, or let's make it easy, uh, 10, and b is 20, and uh, I have a c. Then here I'm going to say c is equal to sum multiply by multiply by 2. Okay, oh sorry, c. Okay, and in here I'm going to say printf percent d and let's go to new line and I'm going to put the c over here. So uh, could you please people tell me, uh, this is a walkthrough that you say you're doing, what is the output of this program? Oh, people, like, m mostly you fell in a trap that I wanted to, which is very good, so I'm going to publish it so you can see what the results are. Like, actually, when you see the, what the results are, most of you are saying it's 60, 60%, 75%, it says it's 60, right? And when I run the program, to my surprise, it's 50. Why is it 50? Because sum is search and replace with A plus B, so essentially this will be replaced to C is set to A plus B multiply by C. And now we'll see that because it's multiplication, this is going to happen first and this is going to happen next. Therefore, the find failed. Are we okay with this? So the find statements are dangerous to use because you have to really think and see What's going to happen when search and replace is happening? Don't use the find statement unless you really have to. Um, and also, when you are having something like, uh, uh, when you actually have a defined statement for constant values, the value doesn't have a type unless it's actually replaced. So the literal value, you want to have a float, it's going to be a double for you. Anytime you put a value like 0 0.12, it's a double, not a float. So if you want to have a float having as a tax, then you can't do that. So constant values are better than defined statements because they specifically hold the type of what they are using and you can never make a mistake like this if uh, you can you, never mistakes happen so that's a defined statement you got to be careful and every single thing that you see over here that starts with a hashtag it means uh, uh, you have uh, all these things happen before compilation so it says compiler make sure secure no warnings you, you don't have no uh, <coughs> CRT secure warnings uh, bring the copy the contents of standard input output header file and paste it here Search for all the sums and replace it to a plus what, a plus b, and then it continues. Are we okay? What the find statement is? Oh, sorry, 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 not that one. Are we okay? What the find statement is? All right. So zero four. Excuse me, professor. Yes. May I ask you something about not check a call? about uh, the you one can ask with any tax. questions about C if you want. What do you want to say? <laughs> um, um, what oh, you're talking about this one. You're talking about, you're talking about this one. This one. Uh, sorry, the tax, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what could we have done with the this? To make it um, right? Yeah. So essentially, this is what's going to be. So if you want to have this, you have to say if value minus tax minus tax okay. tax uh, I can't take it Gra is greater than minus 0 0.0000000001 and value minus tax is less than 0 0.000001. 
if this condition is met it means no matter how, what the value is the difference between resides between those two values and that's close enough therefore we are good okay are we Thank good yeah all right so let me start save it like that so uh, we all know what we're talking about when i say so in math they say in math they call this the absolute value of value minus tax should be less than this so you should check the absolute value for those people who are good with math um, you should check the absolute value anyways let's continue and back in here go back let's see what we have so variable declarations symbols reserves we don't care about that symbol calculation uh, we know all about calculations and, and, and see uh, just the thing that you need to know, know literal values that you put over there. Uh, there are th a certain type of literal values that you can put. Literal values can be put as integer values for integers, as integer values, hexadecimal values, or oct values, octal values, which is base 8. Uh, for 8 is only a zero, uh, 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 0 at the beginning. So careful careful just to show you what I mean okay so let's say this is equal to 17 okay this is equal to 0 17 and this one is equal to 0x17 okay now I'm gonna go see out oh printf percent D percent D percent D a and B and C and we'll go to new line and the values printed will be 17 15 and 23 okay because this means 110 and 17 this means 18 and 17 this one means 116 and 17 and therefore this is going to be the result are we okay with this so this is uh, decimal that is not decimal point but it means base 10 this is oct base 8 and this is hex that is base 60. okay uh professor yes how, how does the system knows it's uh, not sorry didn't get that part how does the system knows which one is which base uh the oct base I mean, when it started with zero zero Yes, that's why I'm saying be careful if you start an integer with zero, that doesn't mean regular integer anymore. Okay, got it. <laughs> Only in literal values, not in, not in uh, calculations and st not like reading from, a, from, uh, from, stan reading from uh, console. If you do a scanf percent D and you put 0, 1, 7, 17 is going to be read when you read it from console. But in your program, it is, so let's put it like this. I'm going to say, int val and I'm gonna say scanf uh, and I'm gonna say printf enter 017 and I'm gonna say over here scanf percent d an address of val and then I'm gonna say uh, printf percent d uh, I'm going to say over here val is and I'll go to new line and I'm going to print the val. So be careful. Oh, this is the wrong one. Copy. I have to put it in a program so it gets executed. There you go. So now if I run the program, if I actually put 017, the result's going to be 17. So reading from console doesn't match. It's only literal values in your program that follow that rule. Do we understand that? Who was the quest person who asked the question? Yeah, that, that's me. Okay, yeah. Vinny, uh, are we okay with this? 
Yes, I am. Uh, just I wasn't aware of that uh, zero. Oh yeah, now we are aware. Good. That's why we are doing the review. <laughs> yeah, Excuse me, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, what happened if we put zero zero seventeen? The same thing. Okay, so zero zero seventeen. Be... So so what if I do this? Okay. The first one is eight. The second one is eight to power two, which is. 64 the third one is x 8 to power 3 8 to power 4 8 to power 5 and this means oct all these things are zero so you're going to have a one and a seven remaining okay all right okay i'm not going to write that thing over there because i i never thought somebody even thinking like that you have a complicated mind my friend <laughs> abdullah yes Abdullah, you are you raise hand. Abdullah, talk. Abdullah, where are you? You rose hand. Oh, can't find unmute. There is a circle underneath with a microphone. Just click on it or Alt M. Oh, without micro Abdullah, did I tell you not to come listen only? Disconnect and come back in with uh, microphone and type your question. Disconnect and come back with uh, uh, not as listen only. I specifically mentioned do not come and listen only. Bad person you are. Anyways, so... Um, Uh, come uh, ask your question when you come back in uh, not refresh the page you don't need to refresh the page at the bottom there is a sign of a speaker click uh, on that yeah one. so basically figure it out after okay like, beautiful thank after. you okay go ahead yeah so it's a dumb question but what happens if never I never say that never eight? ever say that ever if if your question was not dumb you were not a student you were be a professor sitting over here never say that no question is dumb go ahead uh, what happens if I put B equals zero one eight? You what, can't. It's compute? that syntax error. Syntax error? Yeah, you don't have a digit eight in base eight. Yeah, that's why. Uh, that's why I was asking how. Yeah, you cannot. Yeah, you can. Like, like, like it, you're saying, what happens if for hexadecimal I put over here G? <laughs> G yeah. is not a. You know what I mean? We don't yeah. have the maximum thing that you can put over there is an F, right? Because it's hexadecimal. Yeah. So that's why you, I put seven over there. You, if you put eight, it's an error. You can't, like, eight doesn't, doesn't it, it's not something that you can actually put for a base eight. Okay. All yeah. right. Good question. See? And you said, hmm. Uh, regarding, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, regarding Abdullah asked, um, it's base 10, either base 10 or base eight or base 16, right? Yeah, we don't have base two in C language. Okay. Yeah, like Thank I you. know that I think in Python and, and Perl and stuff we have base 2, but we don't have base 2 in C language. They say if you want a base 2, use okay. base 16 because base 16 is easily convertible to. Uh, so essentially, whenever you want to uh, do base 16, this is what you do. So uh, you create a comment section for yourself and you type uh, 1, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you keep changing it. The next one becomes four of it. One, two, three, four, and then 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 you go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then you go zero and one. Zero, one. Whoa. And you keep going like that. Uh, if I can. So it's zero, one, zero, one, zero. And that's your base 16. So literally, you do it like that. And then you can simply say, OK, this is one. You can say this is one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you're gonna go A, B, C, D, and you keep, uh, eight, nine, ten, and you go A, B, C, D, uh, E, F, and you're done. 
okay so that's your base uh, base 16 you just write it like that because it is so easy to convert from hexadecimal so you go one one is zero 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 and seven is this one so you put oh let me just put over there one two oh actually not one zero what are you talking about for that one two three four five six seven eight nine a b c d e and f so uh, whenever i did assembly programming the assembly language at my time what i did was to create this immediately and put it right beside me so whenever i wanted to convert a hexadecimal a zero uh, one seven simply would have been zero 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 and zero one 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 so zero one seven uh, sorry one seven in hex will be that and for uh uh, uh the uh, and for uh, oct uh, translation octal translation uh, these are the four that you use so you go like this so zero to seven you can just convert it like that okay just keep that in mind are we okay with uh, binary and hexadecimal uh, conversion conversions all right and actually i should add this one to the other one copy all right save that and go back here all right let's see what else we need to talk about so we're there character we talked about oh, character we have special characters that if you do something they actually make certain type of noise and stuff like alarm if you put actually backslash a it goes ding in your whatever the ding of your computer is it's going to do like that backspace and read these things these are all um, character uh, shortcuts that you can put uh, string literals we already talked about it so when you put a string literal essentially you are putting uh, a literal value for uh, for an array we talked about remember that we talked about k strings being character arrays remember that so from what I said a direct direct conclusion comes up that if I if I copy my code from here which I actually did the strings where did I write this string? Oh, well, what the heck is So if I just copy this, see, I'm going to copy. Like, let me just copy the code and come back in here. From this, we can come to the conclusion that because a message is equal to hello, yada, 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 I can simply copy that, okay? Remove everything from here. and do put character instead of like and and I have I'm just going to write something over here for you to see so in here I'm going to say character that's character ch so that's a single character now in here I can say ch is equal to and I'll put i over here it's funny but it's possible I'm not going to I didn't put it inside put, put ch I could have put it in here I didn't do it on purpose and I can simply put this one up here ov over here to stop when it's zero so as you see when you write a literal value for a character string you're essentially writing a permanent constant array somewhere that is going to use as as an array and if I run this program surprisingly it's going to actually print the message for you because uh, this is the array of hello review students new line and this is the index so zero means this one means this two means this and it keeps going like that do we understand what uh literal value for strings are all right okay so zero six literal string c string not string c string values dot c okay all right next 
input scanf does scanf receives the address so anything you want to read you put it in a format sign and then you pass the address to it so it knows where it is um, if you don't understand it it doesn't matter so if I, I, I will come to pointers you understand it perfectly if I want to read a value I have to pass its address to scanf so scanf knows where to put that float that comes from the screen so scanf reads this from the screen and says where do I put it and I'm gonna say here how do I say here by passing the address of what I want to print and that's what happens okay uh, are we okay with scanf And that is why when you actually want to read a string, that is why when you actually want to, see, for example, read someone's name, if I go over here, uh, a character C string, and I put over here 50, and in here I'll say, uh, I can say uh, scanf, and I'll put over here, uh, percent go up to and stop at new line so uh, read everything other than where's my carrot go everything read other everything other than new line and I'll put over here the reason that I don't say address of C str for a string because string is an array and arrays name is holding the address of the beginning that's why the string is an exception and you don't get an ampersand. So in here, no ampersand for C S T R C S T R since C S T R is already an address. I don't need to make it to an address. So now if I actually print, I'll go print f uh, print f uh, C S T R and it's going to print it out. Actually, let's not do that. I'm going to, I don't want to confuse the heck out of everyone. All right, so that's it. There you go. So now if I run the program, um, I got builder. Oh, that uh, secure Schmitheer thingy. Give me two seconds. Where was I? Um, here? Yeah. Copy. I should leave that thing at the top. Don't, don't take it out. Yeah, so now if I run it, I can say over here, Fred Soleil, and hit enter, and Fred Soleil comes in. I don't need to put an ampersand over them. Are we good with this? Okay. And here I'm going to say 07. Why no ampersand for C strings in scanf dot C. Okay, so that's that one. Next, where am I? Here. All right, so that's that. Computation. Any questions about uh, computation stuff? Do we are we okay with this? Do I need to talk about the the basic arithmetic uh, stuff? Do we are we okay with that? All right. The only thing that I need to remind you of is modulus, because that's one of the operators in in C language we need to know, uh, 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 which is essentially. Uh, so so this is the only thing that I think it's important to to just remind you of it, and is integer a. Uh, so uh, so I can say a is set to um, I don't know s uh, 15 uh, mod uh, 4 and the result will be percent D and a so and to print that one I need two percents so we know that modulus essentially means to to see how many fours we have in 15 and the print the remain, remain remainder of the so remainder of the division is actually modulus uh, are we okay with the modulus because it comes very handy in programming so 0 8 is mod operator dot c All right. 
So that's that one. We'll go to expressions. Arithmetic expressions, we talked about it. We know what they are, plus, minus, everything's good. Uh, limits, every single variable that you have, it has a limit. When you go more than that limit, uh, you're going to get off of it. So careful, when you're multiplying two integers and put the value result in an integer, if there are two integers that bigger than half of the size of an integer, you're going to have an overflow and the outcome is not going to be right. It's exactly like cup, cups of coffee. You have three cups of coffee. To put two cups of coffee, those two in here, they must have both of them less than half for this thing not to overflow. Otherwise, it's going to overflow. So bear that in mind. All right. Relational expressions. That's the thing. In C language, they're all the same. All operators in C language are the same. You don't need to think about which one is relational, which one is logical. All operators are operators with absolutely no difference and they do their job, which means it doesn't matter. Like in, in C language, I can, say, I can do stuff like this. So uh, int A, say, is there and say B is 10 and C is 20. If I have something like this, I can simply say A is set to B, B less than C. I can do that. It's an operator. An operator's job is to get the left upper and the right upper and the, or if it's uh, so in here, let me just do printf uh, b less than c. c will be equal to I'm going to put percent d and new line just to show you what it is. a. You can actually say a is equal to not b. I can do that. There's no problem with that. I can say, and, and let's print it. So that's not B. And I'm, I can even do not not B. Not not B. Okay, and I'm going to say A is set to not not B. Just to show you how things happen. Any operator is an operator. If I wrote over here, A is set to B plus C, you wouldn't have hesitated to understand what the heck is going on. Because plus, e plus operator's job is to uh, get the left operand and the value of the right operand, sums them up, and puts it in the left one, right? So this becomes 30. So when I have B plus C, we know that B plus C essentially means and I'm going to walk through it so we can uh, see step by step. I'm pressing F10 right now on my Visual Studio to go step by step. So I'll put this one at right side and I'll look at my output at left side. So when I come over here and I run it, as you see, A is garbage, B is 10 and C is 20. B, 10, C, C, 20. The sum of 2 will be 30. 30 is going to go in A and A is it's going to be 30. Are we okay with this? Now, it's the exact same thing with the others. I don't need to worry about it and try to, like, confuse myself. The less than operator's job is to take the value of the left value, which is 10, and the value of right va the value, which is 20. Compare the two. If the right one is greater than the left one, the answer is true. And true in C language, when given with pro to, from program to us, is always 1. Therefore, the result of this one will be true. True is 1. Therefore, A becomes 1. Now, B has value 10. When I say not B, not is a logical operator. It needs condition. When I say not B, it says... Oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. Oh, sorry. Darn it. One more time. So... Yeah, so when I say not B, B is a value, right? Because it has a value and it's not zero, if treated as a condition, it's a true value, not false. When I say not 10, essentially mean not true. And not true, ladies and gentlemen, is false. Therefore, not false will become zero, and therefore, A will have the value of zero. And if I say not not B, this is 10, not 10 will be false and not false will be true. Therefore, true, when C gives it to me, is 1. Therefore, A becomes 1. So, you, sorry, sir, like using uh, not not is basically like reversing twice. Not reversing twice. N uh, 
negating twice. Not negating. Neg sorry, negating. negating. Yeah, yeah, something like. Can I say yeah. negate? I don't know. Inverting maybe. <laughs> Inverting <laughs> twice, but the, some people by mistake they think it becomes ten. It doesn't become ten. It's a condition. It's not minus minus. So if I do mind, if I cannot even write minus minus and b because it means different. <laughs> it reduces by one. But what I'm saying is that it is not this one. It is not minus minus b. Okay, minus minus b. So minus minus b becomes becomes 10 again right because my if this one is minus 10 then minus 10 after that b becomes 10 yeah it becomes 10 and it goes into a and therefore that's that's that so the outcome will be essentially uh 10 okay um so all operators are like this and you can use and later on you're gonna see this is gonna m make our life very easy uh, for example, um, let me just show you an example for it. It's very simple example over here. Um, uh, let's uh, borrow what we had in the previous one. So in here, I'm going to go to literal C string values. I'm going to borrow that, copy, and save this one as 0, 9 operators C. All you need to do is to learn what an operator does, how it works in C language. They're all exactly the same. Did I close just my Solution Explorer? I think I did, yeah. So put it over here and take that thing away. So I'm going to bring it over here like this. Okay. Now take a look. In here, I'm going to say, um, let's actually bring this as a string back to as, as, as C string. So in here, I'm going to say character CSTR. Uh, and I'm going to say set to that. When you don't put a size in an array, it automatically gets the size of the array over here. I don't need CH. So in here, let's say, and in here I'm going to say CSTR to stop at the end. CSTR. Now we know I do not need to say not equal to zero. Because when it reaches to null, zero means false. So that's extra. That's that. Also, if I say want to, Let's say if I want to know how many E's I have, how many E letters I have in a in this string. So in here I'm going to say int uh, int number of E. Okay. So I want to see. I'm going to put zero over there. And in here, so if you are writing C language over here, like uh, like kindergarten version, what you need to do over here is say if uh, C S T R i is equal to e then you're going to say over here number of e uh, plus plus and then in here you're going to say at the end uh, uh, printf total of percent d e is in uh, percent S and I'll go to new line. Okay, so what happens over here? I'm going to put over here uh, number of E and CSDR. So it kind of prints how many E's I have in there. When I run the program, I'm going to see I have total of four E's in Hello uh, Review students. Are we okay with this? Okay, now. A seasoned C programmer never does this because it's too slow. You can always do something better than this. What do what can I do? What I can do is this. Take a look. We know that this condition returns true if these two are the same. Therefore, the value of this condition becomes true if they are the same. Why do I write an if statement? There is no need for it. All I need to do over here is to say number of E plus equal. And because when it becomes true, it's 1. When it's not true, it's 0. Number of E will be 4. I do not need to write an if statement over there and waste the time of the computer jumping through conditions. Just an arithmetic value with operators will do my job. I do not need to write an if statement here. Do we understand this? Okay. 
All right. So that's one of the things. Like when you know what operators do, your programs become more efficient and you can write more beautiful programs as you go through it. So I'm going to write this over here as 10 uh, operators again. So now we know all the operators. I don't need to really go through them and say what is logical. So when you do two ands and need an so so if I if I have in my previous program that I I was in operators over here this one I had these values if I actually have such a thing um if I have the values over here and I go for example a is equal to b and c no problem and needs condition so it's going to treat this and this one as condition 10 and 20 are both non-zero values therefore l a will be uh one okay so are we okay with that right All right, so all operators are the same. Don't give them extra credit. Just learn what they do and use it accordingly. One of the most important thing about a programming language, learning a programming language, is to learn the pattern and use the pattern as you're going through it and try to gain conclusions of the things that you're doing. When you do something and you see how the operator works, apply it to the rest of the language. Don't be squared only in what they tell you. Try to um, uh, get the uh, uh, kind of result of what, what you have over there. So examples of log logical operations, we have that one. The Morgan's Law, please go through them. Shorthanding, again, I have a plus equal operator, again, the only difference between this and a plus operator is that it has a side effect. Plus, plus operator doesn't have a side effect, which means left operand, right operand, it finds the sum, but instead of putting at the left thing, it puts it over here. Obviously, it's an operator by itself, which means you can put it in something if you want to. It doesn't have to be so, like, like um, all I'm saying is that all operators in C language work the same way. You can always use an operator and... Uh, uh, and put the value somewhere. So I can say plus equal with absolutely no problem. It actually does this addition and then the result goes back. And that's why you can have something like A, something like this in C language where you cannot in most languages. Because every language, every operator works the same. The job of assignment operator is to put the value of right side into left side and then re return the result of the whole thing. Every operator returns a value. We don't have an operator that does not return a value. Are we okay with this? Um, professor, I have yes. a question, if that's yes. okay. Yes. Um, if, if we use this method, does it compile faster? I have to look at the binary represent binary um, translation of the thing for for if statement converting yes because essentially it's not change any if statement is essentially checking a condition and doing a jump in in the in the binary code in the assembly code when it translated I do not recall what the translation of this is so I cannot give you an educated guess I don't know okay thank all right. you all right And that's what you're going to hear. Actually, you're not all my students, but you are my student. You're going to notice that um, you're going to hear lots of I don't knows from me because when I don't know something, just, I just don't know. It's just stupid to uh, try to show yourself knowledgeable about everything. And if anybody tells you I know everything, they don't know anything. Anyway, so I'm down here. We're good. Uh, uh, plus plus minus minus you know that this happens after the fact and this one happens before the fact so essentially before the statement after the statement and the results are uh, remaining the same uh, do we know do I need to explain what plus plus and minus minus is all right 
I, if one person says yes, I'll explain it. There's absolutely no problem. So, with plus plus and uh, minus minus, this is the situation. If I have something like this, B uh, set to ten. Okay. Um, if you actually write A is set to B plus uh, plus. Oh, printf uh, A B and percent one of the like um uh, i i self-taught c program c and c plus plus program to myself i never took a course about it ever in my life um, so uh, what happens the way you learn the language is to write yourself sample programs to understand how things work um, i'm telling you that's the best way to do it so i strongly suggest you do it all okay uh, so in here, I'm going to do it like this. So if I have something like that, um, the values are going to be this and that. So, uh, and I'm going to print it beforehand. So, so when this happens, it means A is oh, garbage over here. Let's, let's put over here zero. So A becomes zero, B is 10. When this happens, B, the value of B will write A, and after this statement, plus plus is going to happen. Therefore, A will be 10, and B will be uh, B will be uh, 11. So let me just do it like this. Oh, actually, we have the values. So that's the values. Now, if I do plus plus B, the difference would be that it's going to first add the value to B and then it's going to first add the value to B and then set it. So so to just run it and make sure we understand how it happens, A is 0, B is 10. When you do A, B++, plus plus, first it's going to put B in A, so A will have the value of 10, B becomes 11 after. But when you do a plus plus now, it first adds the value of 11, making it 12. 12 will go in B, and then B will be added by, uh, by, by, uh, um, by one. Okay, so it's after. So this happens uh, after semicolon. This happens before semicolon. Okay, are we okay with this? Use these things really for shorthanding and when you understand when you want to do it. Avoid writing, I'm sorry, stupid stuff like this. Like if I have over here something like, let's say, C is 20, okay? Writing something like this, A is set to plus plus A um, plus uh, B minus minus plus 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 C. Don't write stuff like this because you're going to get, well, what the hell is going on here? Don't stuff like this that are cryptic. In old times, people used to show off that I understand what this crazy thing means. If you understand what this crazy means, you're just crazy, okay? Don't do stuff like this. If it is, if you see it is hard to understand, three years, not three years, three days later, you come back to your code, you're going to get confused by it. Don't do it. Write the code that is obvious. If you want, if you have so many things that are supposed to happen in the same line, separate it in few lines so the, the so people can actually uh, uh, understand. So don't do crazy stuff like this. I'm not going to even explain what the output is. I don't care what the output is. I see something like this, I throw that program away and I will not even accept it as a program. So that's going to be 12 operators. All right, so operators are done. Excuse me, Professor. Yes. When you do like the code, it seems so easy and so easy to understand the code. And when I like the code, it's so hard for me, or even me, for understand. Oh, I can understand. I can tell you exactly how to fix that. Have you seen people drive? Yes. Before you learn how to drive? No. No. When you didn't know how to drive as a kid, you sat beside your father when he was driving, right? <laughs> and you saw right. him drive. It looks very easy. But when you sit behind okay. the car, you hit the tree. Correct. 
yeah. That's programming. If you don't do, you won't learn. And there is no easy solution about it. When I write it, it's easy because it's all in here. It's 23 years that I'm teaching this. If I cannot write it easily, mm -hmm. I'm dumb. But for you, when you start to be able to do it, that's why I always say, if you don't understand a piece of code, write a code to test it and learn. That becomes practice in writing. Therefore, it becomes easy. We good? And I guarantee it's not going to take too much time, Azusa. I guarantee that. If you write code, you learn it. There is no way by reading you can write the code. As if, like if you see shooting, I want to go to a range and start shooting. You see somebody shoots always at target. Can you shoot? No, you have to get it, try it, make sure you do it several times, you understand, and you become a, 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 a distinguished shooter. Otherwise, you can't. So it's exactly like a basketball. Like you throw hoops, you can't. You see, I don't know, some... Basket operator does it halfway through the court in two seconds. It looks so easy, but when you take the ball, it doesn't happen. Do it, and you'll learn. Practice, practice, practice. Can I just reply to her? Because like I went through this struggle during our IPC. It's just the, the it's so easy. You just sit there. This is too complicated. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. But the first thing you have to do is just look at it, and you have to think. Yeah. You have to small, think. Think small first. Yeah, and think and small and, first. and I have a solution for you all. Like. Uh, I don't know how your prof teaches, but to my students, the best way to learn is to go to the notes that I put on GitHub. Every day I'm doing stuff and it just immediately goes on GitHub. Take the code in front of you, take a look at it, read it, try to understand it. Then close it down and write it yourself. See what happens. And when you're doing compiling, if it's worked, perfect, go to the next one. If it didn't, close yours completely. Don't look at it. Don't try to see what is different. Close your code completely and go through my code again and see how you have, how I have done it. Close it completely without looking at it, then try to fix your code. You do yes, that, yes. I guarantee you're going to learn 10 times faster than always. Okay? Walking through the code helps a lot. A lot. Yeah, yeah, that is a great advice. I always find when I when I reach like a, you know, a wall and I can't figure out a problem, I just you know take even like five, 10 minute break, oh, yeah. come back and immediately, oh, you know, yeah. like I find like, the solution. I, I get yeah. goosebumps when you're saying that. You have no idea, like I used to write programs, complicated programs. I was like a team of one programmer. All times it was like this. I was doing this uh, point of sale, an online thingy when, when online stuff was new. I was actually writing this uh, shopping cart and everything to the, and, and it hit a stone. Like I, I couldn't figure out what happened. So what I did, I set the program aside and I took three days off of right coding and I did not do anything. I went drink beer, enjoy my life, talk, going for hikes, watching movies. After three days, it took me 15 minutes to find out what was wrong. So when uh, the that's happened to me so many times last semester. <laughs> and, and, it, and it's always important to tell you when you do something and there's a mistake, if you immediately don't understand what it is, try for a couple of more minutes, five minutes. If you don't understand it, set it aside. Because when you go and come back, you will become a person who's debugging someone else's code and not yourselves. And everything, and I always tell to my student, the code of walking through uh, a, an already existing code or your own code, whatever it is, the key to do it, it turning to an is turning your intelligence to off. You should be dumb as a doorknob, then start walking through the program and only use your knowledge of syntax and see what that syntax does and do it without expecting what's going to happen next. That's how you can walk through your code and find what problems are. If you don't do that, you will keep jumping off your mistake and don't realize what you have done. You should keep that in mind. Anyways, uh, so where were we? Sorry I talked too much, but this is something we have to do. Uh, these are not very important stuff to go through. Compound expressions, anything. well, we know all these things. Uh, logic. It's 12.14. Um, um, Professor, may I ask you a question about Workshop Zero as I couldn't send you an invitation? I have not received uh, part two of the workshop yet. Sarah, there are, I have around 100 students and 100 things have been submitted. 
one by one I have to go through, accept it, write the code, piece of code, add it, do it. I wish I could write a submitter to do that too, so it happens like this. That's going to take a long time. If I'm not finished, don't worry, we're going to do it later. And this is not my students. You are, if you are not my student, you don't have a workshop zero. Only my students have workshop zero. But don't uh, no, no, I'm your, I'm your student. And I have not received, uh, I have even sent you an invitation. You are not listening to me. What I'm saying is that if you have done, what did you, what haven't you seen? Tell me one more time. Uh, workshop zero at the uh, OOP, I have not, uh, I couldn't send you an invitation. So I have not received workshop uh, part two of workshop zero yet. Talk to me afterwards. You don't make sense. Workshop zero is something that I gave to you to do it. You sent an invitation. If you haven't received my invitation back, you cannot do part two. You have to wait for me to do it. And as I send there are 100 students, I'm going to go through them one by one. If I did not have this review session today, I would have done it quickly. But because I have it, it's going to take a long time. You have to wait for me. Uh, of course, Professor. Uh, but uh, the due date is tonight, right? There is no due date. It's, I'm just, I just told you. It's the workshop zero. I gave it to you. If it's later, it doesn't matter. I, all I oh, want, thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. Sorry for bothering you too much. There is no due date for it. There is no hard due date no. for any of them. Okay, yeah, because I think the due date is too late. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much. The due date was just a suggestion so we can do it on time. If I don't give a due date, nobody's going to do it. So I gave a due date, and you see that you're very worried about it. Anyways. Okay, so uh, I, I just wanted to say that let's have a break, and then we'll come back. Is Are you guys okay to get a break? Let's go eat something and come back and see how many people we lose. You usually see we are now, it shows 49 people. Like two of them are me, so we have 47 people. Uh, usually when we go for lunch, some people I think <laughs> something happens to them during lunch because they don't come back. <laughs> but we'll see how many people we're going to have after. All right, so let's have a break. Uh, we're going to come back in uh, um, around, uh, say, uh, 15 minutes. And then we're going to join again. Actually, no, I'm going to leave this on. I'm going to leave it on. I'm just going to pause the recording. That's all. Uh, but in here, I'm going to stop.